Good morning, everyone, and welcome to IT Unity's webinar, Developing with Delve and Office Graph, presented by Victor Villain. Uh, I'm thrilled to welcome you to our webinar uh, platform, and uh, I'm so thrilled so many of you joined from all over the world. We've got people literally across just about every time zone, which is fantastic. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to give you a couple of quick logistical uh, introductions to the uh, event. Uh, during the presentation, uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, obviously listen to Victor and watch his presentation and his demos. Uh, in addition, you can continue to chat with each other, which is done with the open chat pod to the uh, right of my face right now. Uh, but if you've got questions for Victor, please do enter them in the question for presenters pod below me. Uh, that will allow the questions to be queued up and, for the live Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. Uh, so please do submit questions for Victor there. In addition, we have a number of resources for you in the presentation resources module uh, that will get you uh, additional information about uh, Office Graph and Dell. And uh, the link to the slides is already posted. The recording itself will be posted to the same page uh, next week, and you'll get an email notification when the recording is available. And in addition, uh, after the presentation, we'll be sending you, uh, we'll be posting in the same location a link to the event evaluation. Um, so uh, with that, let me uh, introduce uh, Victor. Victor, do you want to turn Let's make sure we can all hear you here. Sure. Can you hear me? Click the webcam button in the top. There we go. Morning. And then click start sharing. Oh, can you hear me now as well? Yeah. Great to be All here. Right, Victor, we are not hearing you. Yeah. Looks uh, like there we go. Eric, Eric can hear you. Okay. So it might be might be my issue here. So uh, we always want to make sure that we've got audio and video as we uh, as we kick in the uh, the event here so it sounds like everyone's good except for me so uh, I will do exactly what I was going to tell you guys which is if by any chance the stream is uh, uh, flaky for you we found the very best solution is simply to close the Adobe Connect console uh, re-log in at the exact same URL that you came to when you started the event so uh, because I can't hear Victor I'm just going to go ahead and toss it to him and uh, let him begin sharing so let me uh, hide the webcam Pod here and let Victor begin sharing. And once he does that, I will actually exit and come right back. Thanks, Dan. All right, and one last quick announcement. Uh, during the presentation, you can go full screen. If you hover over the presentation, you'll see a t uh, near the top, you'll see a title bar that will allow you to go full screen. Just remember, you need to exit full screen mode if you want to um, ask questions or chat. Um, so with that, uh, I will go ahead and toss it over to Victor, uh, and thank you so much, Victor, for coming. Thanks again, Dan. It's great to be here, and great to talk about, talk about that, such an interesting topic as Office Graph and Delve. Uh, I guess you've seen a couple of other webinars this week and read a lot about Delve at uh, the IT Unity website. Um, and as Dan said, feel free to ask questions in the chat window or the, the question uh, window you have in uh, Adobe Connect. I'll try to answer the questions after my presentation and after my demos. So with that, let's get started. Uh, hope you all can see my screen. I can at least. Uh, for those who haven't met me or heard me before, my name is Victor Viren. Uh, works as a Sharpent Architect at Connecta in Sweden. Uh, I have a couple of certifications. Uh, and written two books, mostly about development, or they are developer books, but uh, I started as a developer. Uh, moved into the IT infrastructure, IT Pro stuff a couple of years back, um, and uh, now traveling back and forth between those as an architect, which I find is really interesting. And the Office 365 and all the cloud and everything around that has really changed how I work today uh, compared to previous with uh, SharePoint. And I worked with SharePoint since, uh, yeah, since it was called Tahoe, even before SharePoint 2001. So I I'm really excited about uh, the whole, um, the, the whole business around SharePoint in Office 365 right now, uh, both the product SharePoint and the service 365. And Delve is one of those things that really makes it interesting, or for me personally, it's Office Graph that makes it really interesting. So that's why I'm here today, uh, to talk about how you can use Office Graph. I, I will do 
first to get my point of view of Dell and, and the Office Graph. And for those who haven't seen the previous webinars, a short introduction to Dell. Uh, and then we'll go, go through the basic knowledge on how to leverage Office Graph for, for your own applications or, or apps in, in SharePoint or whatever you're trying to build. Uh, and the key here is that we would, there isn't much actually in the API right right now. Uh, the Office Graph and both Office Graph and Delve are preview features in, in the service and that it might change uh, and it might be a big change or a smaller change. We don't know yet. But I'm going to show you how to work with it right now. Uh, I will show you a couple of apps that are already in the, in the App Store for SharePoint. And uh, we'll take it from there. And I think it's going to be interesting. And I'll also show you some hidden gems as well in the APIs. So, uh, as I said, we start with the Dell, quick introduction to that, and uh, what I think about it, uh, the Office Graph, and then the Graph Query Language, GQL, which is used to, to uh, query the, the Office Graph, and G GQL is what actually builds up Dell and a lot of other services within uh, Office 365. So, what is Dell? Uh, it was announced at the SharePoint conference this spring, uh, uh, at the keynote, I think it was, actually. Uh, it was called Project Oslo, uh, and the reason because it's called Project Oslo is, of course, that the search team uh, has its uh, headquarters in, in Oslo, and everything about Office Graph and uh, Delve is based upon search. So it's uh, the search team, the, the previous FAST team, that's actually building out the, the Office Graph uh, APIs, the service, and the Delve application, which is, makes it even more interesting since uh, Querying this will be really fast since it's based on search. So, Delve, first of all, uh, I'm coming from Sweden and I, I have, have, haven't heard about Delve in, in that sense before. And so I had actually had to do research on Delve and what, what that actually meant. Uh, and, but it makes very much sense what Delve is. And uh, Delve uh, is, is the application that's using the Office Graph uh, uh, to find information or to find information that you normally don't find in your inbox or on your internet homepage or in your collaboration sites. It helps you and guides you to, to find the information you need right now based on your behavior, etc. And that's the whole thing about this new cloud offerings that, that we have out there with the large, uh, huge amounts of data we have and the machine learning that actually make this uh, possible. So Delve, uh, from my point of view, is, is a new way to discover information. Uh, I was really excited at the first when Delve had popped up in my uh, tenant, 365 tenant. Uh, I put that as my start page. Uh, I uh, used that to start my everyday with, uh, to, to find new information. And first of all, it was really interesting. It was, I, I saw really a lot of information I haven't seen before uh, for various reasons. One was permissions wasn't correctly set, uh, so it uh, caused some uh, privacy issues, uh, etc., uh, which we, of course, uh, could, could, could fix really easy. But when it's all based on search and, and what I'm doing and what uh, the connections I, I am currently doing, it's, a, it's a basically a sliding time period. So if my behavior changes, the, the things I see or discover in, in Delve will also change. Uh, currently, it discovers information in SharePoint Online or one, and OneDrive for Business. Uh, it will discover information in Exchange Online uh, and uh, Jammer and other services as well. Uh, also, uh, Microsoft Azure Active Directory, of course, for, for the, the people, the relationships, etc., that are stored in there. But it also uh, queries itself. So whatever you're doing in Delve is fed back into the Office Graph. and gives you better information. So the more you use Delve, the better Delve will be for you. Um, but as I said, Delve is an application that's using the, the Office Graph. Uh, we'll talk about Office Graph in, a, in a just a couple of minutes. But Delve, from my point of view, is an experiment platform that Microsoft is using. Uh, as I said, I started using it every day, but I stopped doing that because it, it, it gives me a lot of information. So, of course, uh, personalized for me and my behavior. But I, I'm starting to feel that it's more like an experiment to, to, to work with Office Graph and see how it works and see how Microsoft can use uh, this kind of information for, for a better purpose. And we've seen that right now. Uh, the video portal that was announced a couple of weeks back 
uh, are actually based on the office graph and the information and signals within Delve, so you can get more customized uh, video, uh, more customized video experience. And I think we will see that in more kind of portals, and, and it would be really cool to build intranets later for uh, have a new site with more in more news personalized to you that you don't you don't have to personalize yourself, but the system personalizes for you. So I think the Delve is just a show-off application to see what you can do, but the things that we as developers or Microsoft the product team will make uh, use of the Office Graph in other ways are where we see the real benefits of the Office Graph. And, and as I said, Delve is a part of the 365 suite, and it's a cloud-only thing. It will not be available, uh, from what I heard on-prem. I don't think uh, the, the infrastructure will be... Uh, Able to, you, you won't be able to set up that kind of infrastructure on-prem. Uh, we most likely will see good hybrid scenarios for this as well. So, but it's a, the Office 365 uh, suite is a requirement. We will also see some apps coming out soon for Windows 8 and Windows Phone. I guess that will be for Android and iPhone as well. Uh, I think it was at the keynote we saw a preview of the Oslo app, uh, Windows 8, uh, modern UI or Metro style app, uh, where you could jump. Uh, between the different connections between documents and persons, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, to discover more information, and that's one way, of, another way of looking at the information. And the, the the app was really cool actually because you had notifications uh, when something new happened in your personal life feed. Uh, if someone that you work closely with update, closely with updated a document, you get a notification that uh, John Doe updated this document or uh, this document is trending around you right now, etc. So just a quick demo of how Dell looks like. So I'll switch over to my browser, which one? This one. So and uh, I guess you've seen uh, the exact same screen a couple of times. It's the, the classic demo of Dell uh, and the classic Garth Fort, and I'm using Sarah Davis right now. So this is the Sarah Davis Dell experience. She clicked on Dell in the new uh, launch app launcher up here. Uh, we have Dell here, and uh, I'm actually pinned Dell here as well. So when I, this is my first view, when I get information about documents and, and people that are trending or uh, have changed uh, or are, should be interesting for me. In this case I see uh, seven people, uh, if I count correctly, uh, that are people that I'm either working with or colleagues or that I've received mail from or etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, this initially when, when Dell was launched, this people feature out on the left hand side didn't work at all, in my opinion. It's much better now, and, and it's it, it actually showing people that I have uh, working with together in collaboration sites or, or, or sending emails back and forth with. And also I get this card view of documents that are uh, modified by people I work with, or uh, as you can see, it says modified by Garth Ford here. Uh, see if we get some trending stuff as well. It should be trending stuff somewhere in here. Probably not seeing that now. And I can pivot in different ways. I can also look at my work and that stuff that I've done. And this is my private feed uh, where I see stuff that I viewed, etc. We'll go, uh, go deeper into the public versus private uh, in a couple of minutes as well. And I can also see the shared with me view. And this is the view that I'm actually using the most uh, to find the documents that people have, have shared uh, within the different uh, OneDrives uh, over our tenants. So this is uh, the most important view for me. And also, I can go in and look at different people. What are they currently doing? I would, of course, only see stuff that I have permissions to. So if Tony here, for instance, uh, modified a document in a secret collaboration site that I don't have permissions to, it will not pop up in here. So uh, very quick introduction to Delve. Uh, and this is the only way we can use Delve today. But we will see apps uh, for Windows 8 uh, or uh, Windows Phone and, and different mobile devices later on. I have no time. Uh, than or a, a ETA for that. So that was a very quick introduction to what Delve is. So let's leave Delve for a minute and take a look at the Office Graph. Because the Office Graph is what actually powers all this and makes me excited about this. The Office Graph is actually a service for Delve. Let's call Delve a product and Office Graph the service. And it's based on search and analytics. Uh, so Everything in uh, that Delve shows you, it uh, queries the Office Graph that fetches everything from the search index. 
and uh, the search index is fed using different signals from different sources. Sources, uh, and currently we have SharePoint and Exchange. We will see Jammer and Link coming up soon, and one other source is Delve itself. So as soon as you click on something in Delve, it will be fed back into the to the index and or analytics and back into the index. So the more you use uh, Delve and the more you click on different uh, verticals, etc., you will get better or more personalized information for you. So, uh, as you can see in the image on the right hand side, uh, on top of the search index, we have a REST API, and that's basically the standard search uh, REST API that we're using, but with the specific syntax to query just the graph, the office graph. And to, to be able to understand how the office graph works, or graphs in general, uh, but the, this is specifically for the office graph. Uh, you have, we have a data model here, and everything in the office graph is built on one actor uh, that uh, acts upon an object, and the relationship between these are called an edge. So the actor might be me acting on a document, which is the object in this case, and uh, I can modify a view, uh, a document for instance. A document can be trending around me, uh, if the object is, is a person, it could be my manager or colleague or some, someone I'm working with. So every edge has have a couple of actions, and there are basically three different kind of actions. There are simple ones, as you can see, modified, viewed, computed ones, which are, are, are calculated uh, within the analytics engine, which is uh, the, the trending and working with, and the one that are very structural that comes basically in this case from the Azure uh, Active Directory, and that's my colleagues, colleagues and managers. So this is a data model that we would use when we, we when we both query uh, when we query uh, the Office Graph. So and the edge, the re relationship between the, the the actor and the object, uh, the edge has a couple of properties, uh, and it's the actor ID and the object ID, and the IDs are ex the same as the ID in the search index. So as if we do just a, a normal search query, we can get an actor ID or an object ID. So basically, we could take in a normal search page and, and use uh, use the, uh, the the search ID, the index of the item, and set that as an actor ID and use that in Office Graph query and do even more customized and cool search uh, centers, for instance. Then we have the action type I talked about. Then we also have a time uh, timestamp when this happened, uh, and we have a waiting as well which is used in different uh, cases depending on, on the action type, but it might be a ranking, etc., etc. Et and there's a number of internal properties. Uh, those are uh, explicitly said not to be used in production, uh, so I just say a number of internal properties here, even though I will use them in my demos later. But uh, the actor ID, object ID, the type and time, and weight are the things that we normally should work with. So let's take a look at the actions. Uh, this slide might seem a little bit obscure, but it's really important to understand these numbers, because when we query something uh, using GQL, we need to use these numbers. If I want to find something that is modified, I need to use, for instance, uh, 1003. If I not need to find some uh, people, uh, stuff that's trending around me, I need to use 1020 here. There's no enum or anything like that in the API so far. Uh, so these numbers are important. And those uh, actions on the top that are dark blue, uh, excuse, I think it's blue, I'm half colorblind, but they, uh, they are at least darker than the ones below. Uh, they, uh, they are the ones that, th those are the actions that are actually documented. But using some, uh, if you look into the JavaScript, you will see a couple of other uh, uh, actions as well. Uh, those are the ones with the uh, blue below that you can actually use, and, and they are used by Dell today, but they are not publicly documented, so use them at your own risk. I don't know ex exactly what all of them do, uh, but they uh, absolutely make an impact on your Dell experience. Another thing that's really important here is the private and public that you have on the different actions. For instance, the public ones are stuff uh, or, or actions that can be seen by others than you. If you modify a document and someone else has permissions to that one, they can see that as well. But for the personal feed, or especially the, the viewed, are private. So if you view a document, then 
it will not pop up in an, any other one's feeds uh, or in the, any other one's Office Graph queries. That's only for you. So viewed, working with, and personal feed are the ones that are private. That's really important to have in mind, both when you're making uh, custom apps and ex also when you talk to, to your to your to customers or your own company about the privacy things in, in Dell. Both security trimmed, they search, and also we have these uh, private and public views. Yep, go to the next slide. So let's start with the graph query language. Uh, I guess some of you have worked with the, the REST APIs in, in SharePoint 2013 or in Office 365. Then you will find it's very, very similar to what you're doing today. So this is the a query that will fetch everything. You will see here we have a query text that says that we should, oh, sorry, uh, that we should query everything. I have a star here. So I find everything. Then I add, to make it a graph query, uh, I need to add the properties, which are this query string parameter, and also the properties I want to fetch. And within these properties, you can actually see that we're uh, trying to find the action that is uh, number 1020, which is trending around me, on the actor with this ID. So this is the most, the most simple qu uh, query you can write. I want to use the graph uh, query language. I want to do, uh, find actions that are on, have number 1020. That means trending around me for this specific actor. And just show me the doc ID and title. And you can just pop that uh, this one into the, to the web browser and get an XML response back. Or you can use jQuery or whatever to find out that. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. But this is basically how it built like. We use the normal uh, a underscore API uh, slash search slash query. Uh, then we append the query text, what we're tr uh, trying to find. It might be just documents or, or anything. Then we add the properties with the graph query. Uh, uh, the graph query syntax, and then the properties we want to see. So this is the basically the simplest query. Step to the next one. We need to find the actor ID. You can see in the previous one, I had a, an, for the actor, I had a long number, and that's the actual index, uh, the, the ID in the search index. So if I want to find a specific actor ID, I can actually use search for that, and then do another query. And just a query text where, I, where I'm trying to find the username, and in this case, victor.belina.contoso.com. I use the source ID, that's for people search, and find the username and doc ID. And then, then I get the, the actor ID back here, if I want to move, uh, do a query uh, upon this user. If I want to do it on myself, I can actually just write me, M-E, instead of the number, which makes it much more easier. So if in, in your apps, uh, uh, most likely you will see, uh, if you want to start start from another person than yourself, you have to do this kind of query first. Or you use me if you want to start from yourself. And then you can, of course, use the, the actor uh, values from, from the, the query you get back, etc. if you want to chain it out uh, into a larger graph, so say. And we can do really complex queries. Uh, writing these um, graph queries can be quite cumbersome, and, and it's really easy to, to, to make small mistakes. So be very thorough when you do this. And the, the easiest way, I think, uh, from when I'm doing it, is just use a web browser and write everything in, in the URL line in the web browser. And you get fairly decent uh, error messages as well if you type something wrong. But in this case, we're trying to f uh, find Two items only. I use row limit equals two uh, for me uh, as the actor, as you can see there. And everything I modified uh, and only on this specific date. So everything I, I want uh, the, the, the graph to return everything I modified on this specific date, but only the two uh, most, most high ranked, high, highest ranked items. I can also use, if I want to use for the for the last week, I can use uh, the range uh, syntax as well and say specify a start date and an end date, or for instance, a start date and then you use max as the end date. So 
uh, from go one man, month back, etc. until today. And this is what I'm thinking is really interesting. Let's say I want to get the, the 10 latest documents that I modified and put that as in a simple uh, web part on the internet start page. That's a very useful uh, scenario. And that's really easy done uh, just, u just using a couple of uh, JavaScript lines. We can also uh, combine this with normal search queries. For instance, if I only want to return documents that have the title SharePoint the, that I have viewed in this case, it looks like this. So as in the query text, I specify the normal search query, just as you do, do in the normal REST syntax. And I add the properties with the graph query syntax here. And, and by the way, the, the presentation is available for you to download in a connect somewhere. Uh, just act, uh, ask in the chat room, and I think Dan will tell you where it is. And we can make even more complex queries here uh, and work with the relationships. In this case, uh, fetch everything uh, that I have modified and is trending around a specific actor. Uh, so you can make this really complex and really hard to read uh, query, so to say, uh, by, by chaining these commands together using AND, uh, the AND clause. Uh, and you can chain that in, uh, I don't know how many levels, I haven't tried that, but I think you can make, uh, make really deeply nested qu queries as well. And if you want to build an app, uh, for instance, with a, with a graph li like the Oslo app, uh, if you saw that on SPC or said, seen it in videos or image, etc., this is a way you can do it. So you can uh, make like a spider web of all the connections within your company, for instance. So uh, instead of looking at PowerPoint slides, I think it's uh, more fun to actually see uh, what, uh, in real life what we can do. And for this, I have this one. And I have actually created two very easy, two very small uh, HTML documents, and I will use the content editor web part uh, to uh, show them to you uh, or upload them into to Office 365. Let's go to my just a normal team site I have here. I already uploaded this, uh, these two HTML documents to the, the document library within the app, as you can see here. That's two demos we will do. Let's take a look at the first one. So let's create a new page. Uh, one, let's call it that. Eight. Then we insert a web part. And I take the content editor web part. Add. Oh, I should probably copy the URL first. Do that in. Add. Copy that one. Yes. Let's modify this web part. And as you can see here, that's, we're not building any app or anything in this case. Just uploading a HTML document, add that into content editor web part, add it to a page. So, and here's an example. I'm not good at UI. Uh, it's boxes with previews and titles in here right now. Uh, but you get the point. So it's very easy for me to do customization of, of a 365 without deploying anything, just using a HTML uh, file, uploading it to the document library, and then uh, use content editor web part. But let's, let's take a look at the code. And it's this one. And uh, I'm using jQuery to do the queries to the REST APIs. And I'm using Knockout uh, for, for the uh, rendering of the UI. Uh, in this case, I prefer to use Knockout. I could use Angular or whatever framework I prefer, but Knockout is really easy in demos and doesn't uh, Angular is a bit uh, more complex to make, in my opinion. And I also use the moment library. Let's, let's zoom in a bit here. I also use the moment library to, for, for date and time formatting. And what I've done here, uh, is, it's quite a lot of code to, to make it done, but let's do it like this first. I created an object here called the document, which has an ID title, site ID, and, and a couple of other properties. Uh, that I will use in, in my knockout view model later. And uh, then I have the actual view model, with the, which is just an observable, observable array of these documents. And also a uh, document ready uh, function using jQuery to, to run my, my uh, show uh, function uh, that uh, contains the ID, the ID of a div that I have, have used down here to actually represent, uh, it's, a, it's a knockout uh, tem template, so to say. So I will, in this case, do it for each over all documents, 
uh, create an ULLI list. Uh, I will make an A uh, and link tag here at the uh, at href uh, text uh, add an thumbnail as, as well here. So when I run the show function, we'll start this method here. I will create the view model for, uh, and I will do the apply bindings, which is the knockout thing to, to do the actual bindings. Then I just use jQuery and get JSON. Let's zoom down that one. And I use a function to create the, the URL for, for, uh, for which I will uh, send in the graph uh, query into. And to get the date, uh, I use the moment uh, and subtract 30 days from today. So I, this, in this case, I will show documents from, from the latest 30 days. Uh, we'll use the current site. Then I append API search query, add the query text, so only pick up documents in this case. Then we go to the properties uh, where, in, where I have the graph query and find all the, uh, everything for me and the action, and action 1003, which is modified if I correct, remember correctly. And you set the range to go 30 back, days back in time until to now and then return 10 items and a couple of properties here, which is stock ID, site ID, web ID, etc. And then I use, uh, go, when, when, when that uh, res, uh, result is returned back, I just parse through that and create my, my Office Graph uh, documents here uh, and parse the, the JSON data that comes back and, and add them to my view model. And, and, and it will be displayed like you can see here. So it's very easy to make that. And of course, if you have some, some UX skills, you can make it look even more exciting. Um, and uh, let's go back here. You can see the preview here as well. Uh, I'm currently using, uh, an, I don't know if it is supported or not, but I use the get preview.ashx uh, to, to actually get a, a preview image. And that's why I, I requested so many properties. So I have the the unique ID of the file, the unique ID of the site, etc. Okay, so that was a very simple demo of, of uh, how to do a graph query. Let's take a look at the, an, another one. It's a slightly modified version of this one. So let's create a new page again. You need to create. We do exactly the same thing. We insert a new web part. Content editor there, and we should select the other file, link address, web part properties. We should have it run here. This one shows uh, two more things compared. Now I'm showing person persons that I, I'm working with uh, in this case. Uh, as you can see, working with here uh, or uh, and Janet here is not only working, I'm not only working with her, she's only, also my manager. Then I have a button here where, in which I can click related items. And that's uh, items that are related to Alex in this case and me that I have permissions to see. So I get them under here. So I'm using the, 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 the values I get back from, from the object and uses that to do, do another query into the Office Graph. And I could, of course, extend this one to see uh, click uh, if I click on a document here and see the relationship that document has or anyone anyone else has to that document etc and that one is in the second file here it's very much uh, similar like the first one uh, with the difference that to the documents I added a couple of other uh, properties such as edges the, uh, the the relationships on the actual uh, document return back the relations uh, and the then I have a function to uh, load the relations. So the, the difference here is that I, when I'm parsing, let me scroll down, once I get back the results, I'm doing some uh, other par parsing of the actual value get it, that I get back. So the edges, for instance, uh, I parse that value. It's, it's a JSON uh, formatted value. So I get in the different relationship that this document has. Uh, let's take a look at the query again. The first query I run is find everything uh, that uh, is around me. 
Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. No, that was the correct one, sorry. So I'm getting that this is the first query. And you will see this syntax in a couple of moments. I'm using the graph ranking model here uh, to, to do in other kind of uh, uh, ordering of, of the items. And that will come in a couple of slides later. But the interesting thing here is the second function where, where I get the, uh, the related uh, items to, to my persons is, is to fetch the documents for them. And then I insert the actual actor ID into the, to the, the graph query and fetch three items for each uh, person. And that, uh, that's it's easier to take a look at the actual results we get back uh, using a web browser. So I have a query here. Copy and paste that into the web browser. And we'll get an XML back. So this is how I, when, I, when I'm creating my queries, I use this way and, and modify, a, use Notepad and, and a web browser to, to get the actual queries correct. And we have, get it back, let's zoom in a bit here, get it back an element called relevant results. We have properties on that one, but we have rows as well, which is the most important thing. We can see the rank, we can see the doc ID, uh, site ID, web ID, etc. the properties I requested. And if we scroll down a bit, we will see here are the edges. We can see the actor ID and the object ID. Then we have the internal properties. Uh, that you shouldn't use, uh, but it can be interesting to use anyway in some cases. Uh, but there's no documentation on that works, so you have to do trial and error because it depends on the different uh, actions that the edge has. Uh, action, or sorry, the blob content here. So this is good way. But uh, fortunately, my great friend Waldeck has created uh, already a uh, really good app for this. So let's go to my site. It's called, uh, it's in the Office uh, 365 uh, App Store. It's called Mavention Office Graph Query Tester. And uh, this is a simple uh, JavaScript based app where you can load up a query from a couple of them and then modify the queries as you, uh, as you, uh, as you like. And just run the query. And you also get some nice UI back based exactly on the Dell card experience here. So if I just want to get uh, three items back, I can modify that, run the query, or I can uh, change uh, the different actions, etc. in here. So this is a really good way, or I would say rather better way to test your, uh, your, your code. But if you want to go, go into the, the actual details of the, the, the different edges, etc., you, you should use the XML. And we also have the, uh, the SharePoint 2013 uh, search uh, tool that's available on Codeplex. Uh, I don't know if it yet ha yet has support for, for Office Graph, but uh, I know they have that in the works, which is also another great tool to do this kind of testing. And there's currently only one uh, doc page of documentation on, uh, on uh, Office Graph and the Office Graph query language. You have that in the presentation resources, uh, MSD and query the Office Graph, it's called. Uh, it's a good read. But the important thing up there uh, to read as well is in preview, uh, and the GQL is only preliminary. So you can, and I expect there to be changes in the query language. Uh, so if you deploy anything to the App Store, you you need to make sure that you can uh, support uh, that that you support it and update the app uh, if they change the APIs. But the key thing here is. It's very easy to do this kind of stuff. If you know jQuery, some uh, rendering framework like Angular or Knockout, uh, and then you just parse the, the JSON or XML data you get back and present it to the end users. And as I said, the, the, the thing that everyone should put on their internet uh, start page is to, to get the 10 latest document that I have modified and put that on the start page. It's an easy win, and I think all the end users would love that feature. So let's see who builds that app and puts that in the App Store first. Okay, uh, actually to, to take a look at uh, Waldeck and, uh, and the Mavention guys has also built two other apps uh, that are good that you could install on, on your site. It's called uh, trending, Mavention Trending Around My Interest and Mavention Documents I Viewed, which are very simple apps that you can go into and, uh, and see the documents that, that I have viewed in this case. You can put them those on any site if you want to.
Okay. Let's go back to and do some more advanced stuff. Let's take a look at this edges thing that I showed you in the XML. As you can see here, uh, we have the, the actor ID, the object ID, uh, that uh, it could be me as a person acting on a document. Then we have the properties uh, that contains the action. And we have the blob and blob content, which are internal stuff. Uh, then we have the time and waiting. The time format has to be in this way. That's why I'm using moment, both because it's easy to work with and you can get the correct time format. And the waiting, you, it's really hard. Uh, it differs very much between different actions. You cannot compare waiting uh, for two different actions. So you have to uh, be careful about that. Sorting. Uh, sorting in, in, uh, in Office Graph is a bit different from, from normal uh, sorting in, in queries in SharePoint. Uh, we need to add another property to our, uh, our properties. Uh, so our properties property in, in, in uh, the Graph Query language. And we need to use the Graph Ranking Model, Features, uh, Function, etc. And we can use Edge Time or Edge Weight. And it has to be formatted exactly like this. It's, as you can see, it's a small JSON. Uh, object in here. And we need to specify the ranking model ID and it has to be this GUID. It's the same GUID for all your tenants and it will always be the same. And this is one of the features that actually you can see this is more or less a preview API. I hope in, a, in a version 1.0 or whatever it will be called that we don't have to write, that we can just write the ref ranking model edge time edge weight and then the, the, the API will take care of the rest. But if you want to sort on, on time or weight, you need to add exactly this graph ranking model with this format and this ranking model ID. That's what you saw in, in the, very quick in the demo previously. Oh, skip that. I, I did that before. So, but you just saw just JavaScript stuff here. Uh, we can do this using CSOM or uh, some other uh, using uh, PHP if you want to do that. We can do that as well. But then we need to create an app in SharePoint, of course. Uh, it's very, if you use CSOM, it's very easy uh, to, to do basically the same as we do with the rest. And we need to give the app permissions to do search. So I've, of course, created a project for that as well. Let me find that Visual Studio. Here is, oh, yeah, that's one. So I created a very simple uh, uh, ASP.NET MVC provider hosted app. Uh, I have the app have permissions on search, query uh, as user ignore app principle. That's the minimum I, I need for, to, to get this to work. The, the caveat here is if you forget this one, you will not get any errors when you do the query. You will just get nothing back. So uh, Yes, I admit I, I stumbled upon that and thought I'd written some wrong in my queries and didn't get anything back uh, because you don't get any errors. Uh, but uh, remember to add this uh, search permissions to your app before you run the actual app. Let's take a look at the controller here. Uh, the first thing I did to my, my app was add a reference to the Microsoft SharePoint client search, as you can see up here, this one. So I get the search. Uh, objects into my project. Then I do, basically I do like any normal uh, uh, provider hosted app, I create the context. I created in this case a very simple cl uh, class for my results. I will only show the title of the documents. So I create a list of that one. Uh, create a user client for uh, SP host. Then I create a keyword query object using the client context. and just as a normal keyword query, a query text, uh, just fetch 10 items. Then I need to add the uh, graph query stuff. And then I need to use the query, to prop query property values, which are available in the Microsoft SharePoint client search uh, in DLL. And I have add a value to that one, actor me in this case, and 1020. Uh, then I add this property, call it graph query, to my keyword query. To get sorting, I need to add another property, create a new query property value, add the exact string that we saw in the slides previously, uh, using edge time to sort on, and add that uh, as a graph ranking model 
to the uh, query properties. And don't forget to set the ranking model ID since I'm using sorting here. And then just use the search executor, uh, get the results back, uh, find the, for the table called relevant results, and then I just uh, walk through them and return a view with my uh, uh, my documents, with my document class that I have here. Let's just see how that one works. F5, some passwords. I guess, yes. Hopefully, Office 365 works in Explorer. I have, I have Windows 10 Tech Preview installed, and uh, I have some issues with 365 with the sweet bar. So let's see if it loads in a couple of seconds. I see there are a couple of questions in the uh, UI here. So we'll take those just after I finished the deck here and these final demos. Let's see. Installing the app, the cloud, even though it's a cloud, it goes way faster to deploy stuff than on-prem. Okay, log in once again. Okay, do you trust? Now you see there I have with Windows 10 Tech Preview. It start, just reloads the page, I'm not touching anything here. So you have to press escape at just the right time here. So it stops loading. I got it. Trust it. And I should be redirected to my app fairly shortly. It's loading symbols. Okay, let's wait for it. Just a couple of seconds. And this one should now fetch uh, and these 10 doc documents that are uh, I have a breakpoint in. Let's go past that one. Page. No, it didn't. Ah, you know why? I was actually logged in as the, the administrator, and the administrator doesn't have this data. So I need to go to the site using Sarah Davis. Thought I did something wrong. I didn't. Let's try it once again. Still stuck in the breakpoint. F5. There we see 10 documents, just the title of them now. So you can create these kind of apps from a provider hosted app as well if you don't want to if you have some really funky uh, stuff you want to hide uh, and don't want to show uh, logic that you don't want to show in javascript you can do it server side if you need to do calculations before i end this demo uh, i said that we can read stuff and query stuff from from the office graph but i want to show you a small thing that i think is really interesting especially for the future so let's go to delve over here uh, and then fire up so we can see the network trace cell here. Uh, clear everything. So zoom down a bit here. Zoom up a bit there. I told you earlier that everything you do in Delve is fed back to the to the Delve engine and uh, or into the analytics of search. So if I click on Molly here, for instance, we will see something here called Signal. Underscore API uh, underscore signal store signals, and it's actually something sent back to uh, Delve. And if we take a closer look at this one here, uh, let's expand something more here. Let's zoom in. Shep or Delve is actually sending signals back to to, uh, to 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 the search index here that I clicked on something. Uh, I clicked on Molly in this case, uh, and some other metadata data about that. This is really interesting. Uh, we can actually feed back uh, stuff or signals into the to the Office Graph index or the search index, uh, on a, uh, feed in our behavior and what we're doing. As of now, I, don't, I think this is totally unsupported to do, but the key thing here is to see the future of uh, Delve and Office Graph. That we might be able to do this kind of stuff in the future, feedback stuff about the documents that we work on or person that we work on or whatever that ends up in the Office Graph. So we, we're getting there, and I think this is really interesting. Uh, it actually works. I, I made document strand, etc., in my Dell by, by feeding in stuff into 
using this uh, uh, unsupported API. But the key thing here is that we, as I said, uh, this is the future of uh, Office Graph and Delve. Uh, and uh, when Delve or Office Graph is starting to be used in other applications, I mentioned the video part of portal already, but I, I see in my crystal ball that uh, it can be used in CRM or in, in um, Dynamics or whatever, or other places in SharePoint, Jammer, Exchange, Link, etc. And if we have the per option as developers to feedback stuff, it could be even more interesting. Uh, let, let's say we build something in a news management, showing news on the, on the start page, feedback stuff, and, and people click on news or comment on news, etc. That would be awesome and really cool experience for the end users. So, I've done about uh, yeah, 50 minutes now of uh, quick introduction about Delve uh, or, and Office Graph, and more about Office Graph. And as you can see, there, there isn't much to do right now. Uh, we, we can query the, the, the graph in quite a different, few different ways. Uh, we can make quite complex queries uh, the, uh, and get really stuff back from the Office Graph and the index. Uh, I also show you that there might be options in the future to, to write back uh, to the write back signals. And uh, I think when that happens is when we will see an explosion in using the, this kind of big data and machine learning and, and Office Graph uh, for real and get real usage out of it. But uh, the Delve application is a, a sh good demo of what we can actually achieve. And it makes, the whole purpose of it is to make it easier for you so you don't have to search for stuff that you, that Delve or, or Office Graph finds stuff for you. Uh, and I, I mix them up all the time, Delve and Office Graph, but it's actually two different things. Delve is the, the, the product and Office Graph is the service and that's very important to know. Uh, we use the Graph Query language, with it, which is currently a, an addition on top of the normal search query language uh, or the search REST APIs. And I think there's very much more to come. And uh, in the documentation it says it's preliminary and it will happen stuff here. Uh, so keep an eye on MSD and, or, or uh, the, the devoffice.com. I think we'll see a lot of more uh, interesting stuff happen there in the future. And also the presentation for you uh, is available for you to download. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, Let's open up for some uh, questions here. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, available on Twitter. Uh, you can email me if you have any questions. Uh, I'm, I should probably put the, the demos, uh, the code samples out there as well. Uh, I say that before anyone asks for it. Um, so uh, let's see if we have any questions here. Uh, All right, Victor, thank you so much. Let's let's uh, let's get the let's get ourselves on camera here so people can. Uh, yep. See ya. One quick second. Okay. Yep. Hopefully everyone is uh, seeing us and hearing us here. Thank you so much. That was such a great presentation. There was a Thank nice you. feedback and in interaction in the chat pod. And, yeah. Uh, I see there are a lot of it's, stuff written in there. I haven't had time to read yet. Yeah, no worries. It was it was great. Uh, it was funny. A lot of the sidebar conversation was about some of the little things, like, oh, like uh, you know, the... the uh, Pinning, pinning Dell to the app bar and stuff, but uh, but people yeah. were definitely uh, tweeting as well about the uh, demos you were doing. They were awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, now the opportunity to open up uh, for questions. Uh, if anyone has uh, questions, go ahead and submit them to the uh, questions for presenters module. Um, hold on one second. Let me cough here. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, a couple of sort of suggestions that are fairly uh, common, which is uh, starting with Jim's question, is there a release date for the Delve app for Windows? Not that, uh, there will probably be one, but not, not any official release date at, at least. Uh, I haven't heard uh, anything, and uh, I just recently asked uh, some of my connections within Microsoft, but they don't have any release date. I don't know what they're waiting for, uh, perhaps Windows 10 or whatever, but uh, yeah, it should be out there, I think. Or it might have to do something that I have in my mind. Delve is some experiment that they're having and seeing if this whole Office Graph scales and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't think they have any rush on that one. They want to get everything perfect first, both with the APIs and Office Graph and, and that kind of stuff. So 
yeah, but it would be cool to have it out. It's a really good demo, especially if you get the all the graphs and things working together. Yeah, and I think that point you made is a really key one, which is that Delve really is a showcase app, but what really, really, really matters is that graph. And it was really cool to see how you yep. were able to pull information out of it to uh, to uh, bubble things up. Um, Fabian, uh, who we all know and love, um, asks, uh, how long does it take to begin using Dell for it to become useful in its connection? So it's really only useful the more connections and interactions you have with others. What have you found? Oh, yeah, it's a good, you need to get Dell to actually work, work, you need, first of all, people working in Office 365 and using Office 365. And they also, you need a lot of content in there. So if you're a two-man company, it's really hard to get Dell working. It's no point having it. Uh, so you, you need to have it on a big scale. I don't have any limits or anything or the magic numbers, but you need to use it. And that, that's the whole thing about it. You need big search corpus. Uh, you need to work with stuff. Uh, and and it's a bit shaky right now. I had stuff showing up that was not modified for, for a year and a half, and it said it was modified by me yesterday and, and that kind of stuff. So they are trying it out right now. And uh, yeah, I think there's some metrics on when stuff starts trending. It has to be at least five people around you. I think it is. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, to uh, to start get stuff start trending, so it has to be at least five. So it's not that many. You don't have to be thousands of people. You just need to be a group that's collaborating, one or two groups. Of course, if you're you're ten people, you probably know you're involved in everything. So then you see everything. But once you get up the, that critical mass, and I think that's depends very much on how you work with Office 365 and OneDrive and Jammer, Link, etc. And yeah, right, as I said, it's only basically SharePoint right now. Jammer isn't in there yet. Uh, signals from Jammer. It's uh, I think it's Exchange as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's been my experience as well. And IT Unity itself is uh, six full-time staff and four part-time, and we actually are finding a good use of One of the things to, that everyone might find interesting is that Office Graph, the engine, has been running in Office 365 for a while. So the day that Delve actually appears in your tenancy, you'll actually see things already. It will almost immediately be useful, um, simply because Office Graph has already been learning. Yeah. about what you're doing in your organization. Yeah, and, and um, another great example, I didn't mention that, for instance, Clutter in, in Exchange is based on Office Graph as well, on your behaviors. So the, the Office Graph is the, the key thing here, and it's doing so much more than just showing the trending documents. So it's, we need to find, think outside the box and find other interesting uh, areas where, where, where Office Graph can be used. And the, I think the, the product groups are doing that by, by the video portal. Perfect example of that. Uh, the clutter, for instance, as well, uh, using that machine learning and that big data um, thing uh, in a good way, using it for the correct purposes. Exactly. And uh, Sulva has a question which I think you started to address, but just to make sure we've covered it all, can you explain a bit more about how we're supposed to understand the concept of trending? Trending, yeah. That's, I think, I don't know the exact formula behind it, but if if five persons or more within your, um, I don't know, a closest sphere of, of connections click on a document uh, or view, view a document, then it's trending around you. So trending, I think it's, uh, I might be wrong, but it's based on, on what people around you are viewing. As I said, the, the, the view action is private, so you cannot see that. But, it, but if a lot of people view something, then it starts trending. So that's the difference. Excellent. Excellent. Um, and uh, 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 Dirk was asking about integration with Yammer. We addressed that. Yes, Yammer signals are coming in uh, in the near future. Um, so the, the signals that Microsoft has talked very, very directly about are um, SharePoint, Exchange, email attachments, not the messages themselves, Yammer, uh, Link. No, I don't know if Link's in there. Um, but uh, and, and, and these the all. Thing, Got you. So uh, those things are all going to come in over time here. Um, and right now, um, Delve is only in the first release tenants. So if you want to have access to Delve, you need to go into your admin portal and opt into first release, and then you'll 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 get those um, you'll get the existing features and you'll get the new features as they're rolled in. Um, That's a good point. And then to, uh, to get Delve and, and then Office Graph, you need to be in first release. And when you turn that on, it takes about 24 hours before you get. The Dell get something into Dell. Dell will be be there, but it's empty for the first 24 hours. 
Excellent. Um, and uh, we have time for like one last question here, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. Uh, uh, Marwan is asking when to use private versus public APIs. In what sense, public? Uh, the, the Office Graph is a public API, uh, but the, if you think about the public-private actions, or is it the, the public-private APIs? Uh, so, but but the, the Office Graph is a public API. The, the signals I showed you is probably a private API. Uh, I think but if you take a look at the actions, yeah, the, the actions are the public ones are the private ones. If, if you want to do something for me, documents that I viewed, for instance, you want some personalization just for the person who's looking at the app, like the 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 Mavention app that I showed, documents I viewed, for instance. That's a good example. Or I talked about the ten documents, ten latest documents I modified on the internet start page. You could have the same for the ten documents I viewed. It's most likely that view one of those documents again. Exactly. Just to maybe add some clarity to that, the, the action type has a property of whether it's public or private. So, for example, you're mentioning viewing. Viewing is a private action. So, if I, if you've looked at a document, I can't see what you've looked at because that's a private edge between you and the document, even if you and I are colleagues. However, if you modify it, modifies a public action type. So, if you and I are colleagues, I also have access to that document, at least at read level. I will be able to then see that you modify it. Um, so it purely is about aligning the action type you're interested in with the players. Um, and the private private action types will only bubble up information if, if you're looking at that actor. Yeah, it's a privacy issue. Uh, it would be really annoying if it starts stuff that you, if you view something and that shows up uh, in the, for everyone. If, for instance, if you take a look at the drug policy and everyone in the company can see that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And on that note, <laughs> we're going to run out of time here. So let me uh, do a quick little wrap up. Um, for everyone in the room, uh, in the presentation resources, there is the, there are the slides, um, and uh, at that page will be also where we post the um, recording. Once made available, it will take us about a week to get the recordings up because we have five five webinars this week, so it's going to take some time. But that's where they'll be. I'm going to add a link to the evaluation. Let me do that right now. Um, so if, when you leave, you could fill in the evaluation. That would be wonderful. Um, and uh, we'll also push the evaluation to you when the room closes. And if pop-ups are enabled on your system, you'll get to it automatically. Um, so uh, the, the, but the page that mentioned slides where all the resources will be, that's also where we'll get the code samples posted. Um, keep in mind, we've got two additional great webinars this week. We've got Christian Buckley talking about how Delve and Office Graph really enable the new world of enterprise social. That starts in one hour. Uh, and then tomorrow, we've got a panel of experts, uh, nine amazing experts here to talk about uh, Delve and Office Graph and really to focus on answering questions. So that'll be a very highly interactive. All of us are going to be on webcam. Unfortunately, Victor is actually going and having a, 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 the beginning of this Christmas season, so we will miss you tomorrow, Victor. <laughs> Um, but thank you so, so very much for coming today. It's wonderful to uh, have an opportunity to work with you. I know this is a time out of your afternoon with your family, and I really appreciate you spending time with us and with the community. Thank you, Don. It was great. All right. Uh, I uh, very much appreciate it. Everyone take care. We will uh, be closing the room here in just a moment um, and uh, pushing the evaluation to you, and hopefully we'll see many of you at Christian's webinar. If you want to come to Christian's webinar or the panel and haven't yet, just go to itunity.com and you can register. Thanks so much. Talk to me again, Victor. Thank you. Merry Christmas.